We're going to be talking a lot about performatives in this lecture. Indeed, the, de the definition of a performative is going to be something we talk about a lot in a few videos' time. But in this video, we're going to introduce the concept of, of a performative just by thinking about particular examples and saying some general things about the distinction between performatives on the one hand and what Austin calls constantives on the other hand. So to see the distinction, let's just compare some sentences. So for the first sentence, we'll put something like, Austin was a crappy Oxford Don. And then for the second sentence, let's say something like, I hereby name this ship Uh, let's say Bodhi McBoat face. If you're wondering about the strange name, there was, there's a story behind this. Google it and look it up. So let's think about the, a difference between what happens, at least some of the time, when people say these sentences. So when I'm saying sentence one, I'm reporting what I take to be a fact. I'm saying something about the world. In particular, something about J.L. Austen, a uh, former inhabitant of the world. But I'm saying he was a crabby Oxford Don. So in this claim, I'm making a statement. I'm saying something that's the, that, that is or isn't the case. I'm, make, I'm making a claim which can be true or false. The thing Austen wanted to point out was that when we think about sentence two, it's, it's not clear that sentence two really works that way. In fact, it seems to do something pretty different, at least some of the time. Because think about a naming ceremony where the ship is actually being named. And the person says, I hereby name this ship Bodhi McBoatface, and then they smash the bottle of champagne on the ship, or whatever it is people do when they name ships. Even though superficially these sentences look sort of similar in certain ways, something very different seems to be happening in the second case. Because what's happening in the second case is that, well, after the person says this, after they say, I hereby name this ship Bodhi McBoatface, it then becomes actually, as a matter of fact, true that that is the name of the ship. So something that's kind of interesting about this case is, you might put it, saying it makes it so, or at least in certain cases, saying it makes it so. The ship comes to have the name Bodie McBoatface precisely because somebody says this sentence. Austin gives one more example. So, you know, I hereby declare you man and wife. So suppose somebody says that in the course of a marriage ceremony. Well, after they say this sentence, it becomes true, or it becomes so. If the right person says, I hereby declare you man and wife, then the two people that they're talking to become married. This is part of, the, this is part of what it takes to be married. So again, we see something similar where in a certain kind of case, saying this kind of sentence makes it so. Saying that somebody, saying, declaring that two people are married is exactly what makes them married in the first place. So that's a, a really interesting sort of distinction we have between two and three and one. Because one doesn't seem to do that. It, it, may, or, it may or may not be true that Austin was a crabby ex for Don, but my saying that has nothing to do with whether it's a fact or not. It's a, a fact independently of whether anybody ever said that. Not so with these two. In certain cases, saying these things suffice to make it so, and maybe in certain cases it's also necessary. Like in the marriage case, maybe it's necessary to say that. Maybe two people don't become married until somebody of the right status says that. So this is a really big difference between these things, which we're going to call the constantives, constatives, and these two, which we'll call, we'll call the performatives. So that's going to be our rough characterization for now of what a performative is. It's a kind of state, it's a kind of speech act, a kind of thing you might say, where somehow saying it makes it so, saying it makes it the case. And with performatives, it looks like the main aim is not to state a fact. Like when I say, I hereby name the ship Odie McBoatface, or I hereby declare a man and wife, Austin thinks we're not trying to state facts about the world, we're trying to do things. 
we're trying to name a ship, or we're trying to we're trying to marry people. In general, there's some sort of character. There's some sort of contrast between making an assertion or saying something, saying that something is the case, and doing something with a particular sentence. Now that can't be all that there is to the difference between constatives and performatives, just that you're doing something with a sentence. Because there are plenty of other sentences that seem to do things. So take, we've been focusing on what have been called declarative sentences. But there are lots, and in fact we've been talking mostly about declaratives for the entire class. But it's important to remember there are lots of other kinds of sentences in English. Like take a command, close the door. Again, if I say close the door, I'm clearly not trying to state a fact about the world. That's, not, that's just not what these sentences, which we'll call imperatives, that's not what imperatives do. They don't state facts. And also, it doesn't look like we want to say that close the door is, an, is, a, is a performative, even though it's doing something. Closing, saying close the door doesn't necessarily make it so, in the same sense that saying this sentence makes it so, or can make it so, and saying this sentence can make it so. So while the idea of a performative at least partly includes this idea of like doing something apart from making a statement about the world, that by itself can't be just all there is to a performative, because as we can see, imperatives do that too. So the other thing that seems to be distinguishing, it, in addition to the idea that they don't make statements, they rather, they're, they're used to do something, is that they're sort of of the form of other sentences that usually are used to make statements. Because we can, let me put the earlier example up again. Boston was a crabby old Oxford Don. Clearly in their grammatical form, Sentences two and three look a lot more like one than they do like two. Two is grammatically, as we said, an imperative. It's a thing that expresses commands. But two and three, they're not imperatives. They don't have this kind of ordered form of the verb. Rather, the verb appears in the normal way as it does in normal declarative sentences. So it seems like performatives are used to do things, but the thing that's interesting about them is that they're grammatically, they look like sentences that aren't used to do things. They're, they look grammatically like sentences that are used to report things. So that's another very curious thing about performatives. Now, as we said, performatives seem to kind of make the thing that they're talking about so. Let me just give you one more example. With this kind of thing, it's, it's good to have as many examples as possible. So let's say sentence four is, I declare you guilty. And imagine that being said by a judge or something like that. When the judge says this, well then that, that then the subject becomes recognized as guilty. So again, we see this idea that performative seem to make it so in some sense. But if you think about it, this is kind of quite a strange thing, or at least it's not something that's in general true. We can't in general make things true just by saying them. I can't, you know, for instance, I might say something like, I hereby stand on my head. In that case, clearly saying it is not going to make it so. No matter how much I say it, I'm not going to become standing on my head just because I say I am. I can't talk myself into a headstand in the way that I, in certain cases, can talk myself into naming a ship and talk myself into, into marrying people if I have the right sort of credentials. So again, this is a very kind of surprising property in certain cases that we're able to do something by just saying it. Because there's clearly a lot of things, clearly probably most things we can't do by just saying it. For instance, I can't become rich just by saying I hereby become very rich or I hereby declare myself rich. So there's something special about the cases where performatives work that distinguishes them from cases where clearly they can't work. And we'd like to know a bit what a bit what that is. That's one kind of limitation that comes with performatives. There's only certain kinds of things that you can perform by saying them. So things like naming ships or declaring people married or maybe declaring people guilty. It's things like that that you can do by saying them and not things like standing on your head or becoming rich. But the other thing that's important is that, as you maybe have copped on to already, not everybody can do these things by saying it. So some people can name ships by saying it, some people can marry people by saying it, some people can declare people guilty by saying it, but clearly not everybody. 
So for instance, take an extreme example, if I just picked two random students in this class and I said, I hereby declare you married, of course you're not married. I can't do that, I can't make you married by saying it, um, and I wouldn't even try, of course. Likewise, I can't just say I pronounce you guilty, making you thereby guilty. And the reason why I can't, I in particular can't do either of those things is because I don't seem to have the right status. To declare people married, you have to have a certain status in law, the same with declaring people guilty. To name a ship, you have, a, have to have a certain kind of relationship to the, to the ship, you have to have a certain kind of stake in it, or something like that. So while you can perform actions by saying these things, not just anybody can do it. It's only people with the right kind of social situation, the right kind of social standing to do it. So let's, write, let's just write down what we know about performatives so far. They're used to do things like naming or marrying. Grammatically, they look like statements. That is, they look different from imperatives, questions, and things like that. There's this idea that what's going on in a performative is that saying it makes it so. But we also saw there are limits. One limit is that only certain things can be performed with a performative. So there's a limit on the kind of actions. And then importantly, there's also a limit on who can do it. Only certain people can use words in a certain way to perform actions. So it requires a certain kind of social standing, as we said. I'm going to add one more property to this that Austin thinks that performatives have. This is probably mo the most controversial one he says in, 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 the, in the selections we've read. But Austin wants to say that performative statements or performatives, performative speech acts are neither true nor false. And if true, this is supposed to be especially surprising since grammatically they look like statements. They look like things which say true or false things. And yet Austin wants to say, well, actually they don't. They are not things that are true or false. What's the argument for this? Well, there's basically two kinds of ideas here. So one thing Austin says is, well, if you think about a performative, a particular case where somebody makes a performative utterance, it sounds kind of weird to say that they said something true or false. So suppose that I named the ship, I say, like, I named the ship, Buddy McBoatface, and then somebody turns around to you and asks, oh, is what David said true, or is it false? Austin's feeling is that's kind of a strange thing to do. It's just kind of a strange question to even ask in that situation. Because I wasn't really making a statement in the, in the first place. It wasn't like I was like telling somebody what the, the ship was named. I was just trying to make it named that. And so for that reason, it seems kind of weird to ask the question, is, it, is what I said true or false? There's a related kind of argument, which I'm not sure if Austin actually gives it, but I think it might. it's sort of in the area, so it's worth mentioning. As we said, in a case like this, where I say, I hereby name the ship Bodie McBoatface, I'm not trying to say that something is true. I'm not asserting a proposition. I'm rather, I'm doing something else. I'm naming a ship. And you might think that, well, naming ships, or marrying people, or declaring people guilty, that's not just, just not the right kind of thing to be true or false in the first place. Like, asserting, making an assertion, maybe that's something that can be true or false. Or believing something, a belief can be true or false. But marrying and naming and declaring guilty, these are not things that can be true or false. They're just the wrong kind of thing to be true or false. So that is kind of the gist of the idea why you might think that performative speech acts or performative utterances are not true or false. Because they're doing something, the thing that they're, they're not in the business of making claims about the world in the first place. That was kind of, I think, the general thought that Austin had. This is something we'll kind of come back to the idea that performatives aren't true or false. It's worth thinking yourselves whether you agree with that. And in particular, does the fact that it's, it's kind of strange to ask the question, does that, immediately set, does that immediately tell against the idea of there being true or false? Or could it be that they really are true or false, even though the question is kind of strange?
This is a kind of theme that we'll come back to over the next few weeks. So that's our first video on performatives. What we did was we looked at a few examples of performatives, and we drew up some kind of rough distinctions between performatives and constatives. So we said performatives, they're used to do things, like it's when you say a sentence to do something, like naming or marrying or declaring people guilty, things like that. Grammatically, they look like what we might call statements. They look like things like Austin was a crabby Oxford Dom. But importantly, in some sense with performatives, saying the performative, making the performative utterance can make it the case. Saying that you're naming the ship, voting the boat face, is what makes the ship have that name. But there are limits. Only certain things can be performed. You can't perform a headstand by saying that you're performing a headstand. It's only things like naming, marrying, etc. And you require some social standing. Not just anybody can go around marrying people or naming ships or whatever, thankfully. And finally, as we said, the most controversial aspect of Austin's view is that performatives are neither true nor false. They're just not in the business of making claims in the first place. So that's the idea of a performative. 